This is Night Force Action Report for July 30th, 2013 from HorribleNight.com. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight is Aaron McNeil. I'm just here until I get enough bells to pay off my debt. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that your credit worked that way. I don't know. I had. Every, a, I feel kind of dirty. That means I'm working with Tom Nook. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? Tom Nook is a bad man. Don't work for him. Yeah, that's right. No, Ethan's a no show. Jason's a no show. That means Aaron and I are free to talk about as much Animal Crossing as we <laughs> desire. Um, but we're gonna we'll hold that off for a little bit. Uh, what, what are you? What have you been up to? I've been up to expensive, necessary things. <laughs> my my good old Escort, my Ford Escort. Is finally dying on me. It's from '99. Some good times. Bought it from my dad for a penny because he bought it for me as a gift. <laughs> That's how you pass certificates along, uh, or pass the title along. And so it finally started crapping out on me. I'm like, I'm sick of this. I, I sat my wife down. And I'm like, get me a new car. And so this past weekend we went out and I found a 2013 Chevy Cruze. And so I'm like, yeah, that's a nice car. My parents have this uh, discount they can get. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go for this one. We'll see if we can afford it. Credit's good. Yeah. They're like, oh, we'll get the plan going once you get the code for us. And the guy comes back to the office while we're sitting there. We've been there for hours. And uh, the salesman comes back, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to let you take it home today. Jeez. <laughs> like, no money down. We didn't have a checkbook on us. We weren't expecting this at all, so we paid nothing. That's that that's a day. that's a good price for a car. Yeah, that's a great price to go to a a car lot and then just leave with both cars. <laughs> but you said you were there for hours. That was kind of my my least favorite part about buying a car was how it's, it took all fucking day. It yeah, it's horrible. We got there maybe fifteen minutes after they opened, like nine in the morning on Saturday. And but the problem with being there so long wasn't so much just the buying the car, but with my mother having this code she could get to get me a discount on a new car mm -hmm. i had to call her up and then i'm like so what do you have to do to get me this code and she's like i have no idea <laughs> and my dad's out of town he knows all this stuff and so i'm like oh my god so i guess and the guy's like i can kind of help walk you through it you know go to this website enter this information but she didn't know what to do <laughs> with any of that and i mean she works on a computer every day like doing numbers and accounting financial stuff but I, you could feel the the frustration was tangible through me and through the phone. I'm like yelling at her, like, Mom, do it this way. And she's like, Aaron, shut up. I'm doing this. <laughs> and like this guy is just sitting there and he's having to deal with my wife sitting there too. Everyone's just focused on me arguing with my mother on the phone. And I, I'm like, he's such a good sport. You know, and he doesn't seem so frustrated with me. I'm just arguing with with my mother, you know, about trying to get this car, and he's like, "Oh, there have been far worse oh, yeah, than I'm you." Sure. <laughs> uh, like they always keep that whole, the actual transaction, and the money talk so separate from the shopping part, like looking yeah. for the car. Like that that car sales salesman cannot wait to hand you off to the financial guy who just deals with a whole other world of shit and. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never, I never liked to visit that world, and um, um, that had to be really emasculating for you, having that, having a fight with your mother in that situation. <laughs> yeah, having a fight with my mother on the phone. I'm like, it, it is really horrible when I place it outside the context, but I'm like, oh, I'm getting a new car, and I am married. It's not like I'm going to go home, you know, to my parents. So uh, it could be a, it could be far worse than what just happened. <laughs> But you have a new car. But hey, so. I got to drive a. Yeah, I got a new car, and I, I finally gave them some money for it, so they know I'm good. <laughs> what did they? I didn't steal it. When were you actually supposed to make the first payment? Like, do they say pay us tomorrow or uh, pay us in a month? Uh, I'm doing financing on it, and so I would have normally. We wanted to put cash down just to take that financing monthly cost down, mm. and so we would have normally given them the check that day, but. Neither of us. I don't carry a checkbook. I don't have room for it yeah. in my pants. And <laughs> then my wife didn't have it either. So <laughs> we were like, uh, and she's like, I ah, just bring it in whenever you can. So I swung by there Monday because I don't want them to think I'm a bad person. <laughs> well, just joy riding their car around. I it sounds like if they gave you a free car, they had pretty high. They, I think they had high respect for you. So I wouldn't worry about that. 
yeah, I'm not too worried. <laughs> uh, but that same day, my wife's uh, dad was coming over to help fix the radiator in her car. And so we're like, get there at 12 o'clock. And he arrives at 12. Okay. And where are we? We are still at the dealership. Oh, yeah. And so he's like, oh, we'll, we're still trying to finish this up and get the car. You know, you we'll be there soon. Sorry about that. I'm like, you can try to break into the house if you want. <laughs> I mean, the dogs won't fight you. They know who you are. And uh, by the time we got to the house, it was 1.30, so we had waited 90 minutes for us to come back with this car. But we did get the radiator fixed really fast, and he's a he's a good sport. He's a good Jeez. guy. So <laughs> I felt so bad. Uh, we bought pizza, so he got free pizza. I guess that was okay. <laughs> that sounds like it could have gone a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. I mean, I, I dread. I, I think I'm going to hold on to my car. I bought it like three or four years ago. I'm gonna hold on to it just so I don't have to go through that, the whole car buying experience again. So, actually, like when I was buying the engagement ring recently, I had flashbacks to buying the car, and I was like, it's just, "Oh, really? It's just like the most. That's just the most terrible thing ever. The ring didn't end up being that at, that at all. But when I yeah. walked in, I just had flashbacks, and I was like, "Oh God, if I'm here all all day and oh, yeah. it's easy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy to be stuck in there all day, like." I, I take it most men don't go ring shopping, yeah, you know, yeah. every other weekend or anything, so it's a stressful experience, but once you find that ring, you're done. Anything else going on? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, all Everything happened to me on Saturday, but uh, the funniest thing about it, I got, I, I got a new car, we fixed up the old car, but when I was moving some branches around, I... Um, I didn't notice there was a toad hiding underneath these branches in uh, my driveway. I went to move, clear a spot to park my old car there. And this little toad was, like, camouflaged perfectly in these branches. And I had gloves on, but I was reaching down there, you know, moving the branches around. Came back and it just scared the shit out of me. I'm like, oh, my God, there was a toad there this whole time. And so uh, my wife's like, pick it up. And I'm like, you pick it up. So no one picked it up. So no <laughs> But we wanted to give it a name and a whole backstory and everything, and like ten minutes later, it was gone. <laughs> he didn't even stick around for the for his for his life story. No, I came back and we could have, you know, developed a whole background for it, put in the horrible night wiki as the toad in my driveway. Yeah, all I like. Hopefully, he was like a battle toad and not and not slippy, because that was the first thing that popped in my mind. So yeah, I prefer battle toads better. I could have played that music for him, just the pause music. We were I was looking through that through our arcade games last weekend. I've never the arcade version of Battletoads. And um I remember when I Whoops. took the uh <laughs> when I when I got the NES game, you know, they advertised the three Battletoads and I think they're what it's Zitz, Pimple, and Rash. That know. sounds about right. And I don't think you got to play as Pimple. I think you only got to play as Rash and Zitz, and I was pissed Yo. that they wouldn't let you choose that third Battletoad. Yeah, I think that's about how it works. Isn't one of them captured in the I think start? so. I think that's how they got yeah. it. So maybe that was Pimple in your... I'm getting like a, an automated call <laughs> from a politician. This is fantastic. <laughs> Oh, that's how you know it's a live show. Chat, go go and play that back. To see if that was actually the car the car dealership calling about their stolen vehicle. <laughs> it was the police. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I went and saw The Conjuring uh, last week. I I met we I've oh, been wow. trying to go see Pacific Rim, but that didn't. I still happen. need to see that too. Yeah, but you I didn't pitched it, and no one's seen it. I don't know why it's so hard to get out to theaters to go see that. Just because I know I know my fiance won't go with me is pretty much the the main driver there. So, but we like scary movies and heard good things about The Conjuring, um, and it's awesome. <laughs> it is a great. It's, awesome. it's a great ghost story. It's it's it doesn't do anything terribly new for the genre, but also just yeah. just a straight up like Hollywood exorcist slash haunting movie they haven't really done those like done those well lately they you know you've got your found footage films which are which feel completely different and then you've got a bunch of you know shitty normal horror films or your saws and that, and that sort of thing but just yeah. a straight up traditional 
horror ghost movie with, you know, demons and exorcisms. They haven't done that um, all that well recently, and this is one of the best ones I've seen, and it was... Uh, it was it was really entertaining. It was a lot lots of jump scares. Um, I My think favorite. I think that um, because I'm used to the found the found footage films, I wasn't as scared by this one because like when they when they set up any like you know long shots of like the girl peeking under her bed to see what's 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 under her bed because I know it's not going to look as real as some of those found footage movies like. Yeah. It wasn't as scary to me, but it was still like the crowd was really into it, and that was uh, it was really fun. It was I remember watching this trailer and making fun of the title of the movie and thought it was kind of <laughs> stupid, and it kind of shut me up. So um, that's funny about the title of the movie because my wife and I were looking for movies to go see, and she was just reading through a list, and she gets to The Conjuring and says it like The Conjuring, and then like stops, <laughs> and she's like, "Oh wait, it's The Conjuring," and so ever since then. I've been calling uh, that movie The Conjuring. Conjuring. <laughs> <laughs> um, the weird part is it has Peter Gibbons from uh, Office Space. In uh, it as yeah, I heard. I heard in another podcast. Just yesterday I was mowing the lawn in the cat cast. Yeah, <laughs> and they mentioned that, and I was like, well, maybe I want to see it. I'm not a very big scary movie guy other than my high praise of Cabin in the Woods. But <laughs> once they said, you know, someone from Office Space was in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It caught me off, caught me off guard. He was he was fine. Um, it's also did he get hypnotized? No, no. <laughs> he's pretty he's pretty resilient in this one. Um, it's also I think a prequel to technically uh, a prequel to the Am- Amityville Horror because it's the same basically the same demonologists that investigated that one. This is supposed to be their you know one of their stories that they haven't told because it's just too terrifying. That's as they say based on a true story. So. Um, I was like, well, yeah. if this was really more terrifying, they probably would have opened with it rather than the Amityville Horror, but that one got them more press. So, um, And if you watch any of the um, paranormal, paranormal shows around like the Discovery Channel and all that, um, okay, she'll actually, I forget her name right, right offhand, but she actually shows up as um, an investigator on Paranormal State, that show. So uh, the, the older... Hmm. The older demonologist that sometimes shows up and investigates with them. Um, they're really famous. I can't <laughs> believe I'm blanking on the name, but you can look it up. Um, then, I like to imagine a person majoring in demonology. I, yeah. I mean, so the whole the movie takes place like in the 70s. I don't even know. like, And, and a lot of the investigation like kind of mirrors you know, modern paranormal investigations when you ever see them setting up cameras and all that, but they're doing this with like seventies film equipment and, and <laughs> recording devices. And that was, that was kind of interesting to see them, uh, uh kind of go through those same motions and see where, where it, you know, where it all kind of started. So that was kind of cool. Um, I also, <laughs> like in my spare time, there's been a lot going on, um, in the kind of why, uh, the site's been a little bit sporadic in the last week, but, um, I'm actually working on something um, kind of related to the site, but for the first time, I've started a few like digital businesses in my day, but I've never started anything that like is actually going to have like a physical location. Like I've done web development companies, yeah. I've done Horrible Night, we do that, you know, we use different locations for that, but um, actually like trying to actually start something that is like a brick and mortar physical business is a completely different process and. Um, so I've been kind of absorbed in getting a crash course of how to open like, you know, a traditional business rather than these startups <laughs> that I'm used to. And um, it's been kind of blowing my mind as far as like ba- I'm basically writing a business plan and I've never had to do something like that. So uh, oh, um, what got it you started is wanting huh? to do what got you started into wanting to open a, a just, physical place. I just I've had a lot of. Uh, conversations in the past six months um with some friends about like going into business together and we've always had had these ideas and then recently um we just met up with some some out of town friends and somehow that one of these conversations about what we were potentially doing came up and they got really excited about it and because of that it kind of reignited my fire and i was like i'm just gonna i'm gonna do it let's just like let's get a plan together and then talk to people about getting investments and that sort of thing, and uh, just to see what that's what that. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but 
I've been yeah. pretty I've been pretty heads down on it for the last week and it's been uh, it's been interesting and just totally I don't know just the contrast between doing that and just starting like an online business is um really um uh, really been really it's been a learning experience so I hope you're starting a, a restaurant like a burrito restaurant a burrito <laughs> yeah and then you'll run into trouble and food network will come bail you out or a food truck I was wondering. Yeah, a truck. food truck. You just do a food truck. A food truck slash putt putt. It's a traveling putt putt establishment. That's and what I'm working on. You get you know? discounts. <laughs> yeah, by putt putting into the truck. Yeah, but sorry that I'm being so vague. But it's just it's. If it needs to come out, it'll come out uh, soon enough. But just I don't understandable know, because I've been heads down in that. Like I had to kind of bring that bring that up. But um, let's move on to video games with the new releases of the week. Um, there's actually a handful of, you know, I wouldn't say there's like a lot of major releases, but a lot of interesting releases this week. Definitely. Um, first of which, I, this Sunday, Wii U finally gets a new game, and <laughs> Pikmin three <laughs> Pikmin three comes out, so that's probably the biggest release of the week. But I don't know, everything I've been reading on that's been like people are just angry at Nintendo. I don't know if they're like disappointed in this game or this. It's, there's not much good buzz around this release. Really? I've yeah. seen some, uh, I guess from reviewers or people that have review copies, they seem to like it well enough, and I like Pikmin, but I'm not going to buy a Wii U yeah. this Sunday. Yeah. So I'll be curious to see how that one sells. Um, also, on, on the Nintendo side of things, Kirb, Kirby's Dream Land 2 for the 3DS eShop. Um, I used the, to play that game a lot. <laughs> I played the first one. What's well, like? Do you do you know which one you prefer out of the first or second one? Are they different uh, enough? The first, yeah, they're pretty different. The first one's quality. I got I started speed running that one after a while back in the day. But Kirby's Dream Land Two introduced introduced uh, the rideable pets. Yeah, like Rick the hamster and oh. whatever the fish. <laughs> was it really Rick the hamster? It was. It's. I. It's the only That's name awesome. I remember. Yeah, Rick the hamster. <laughs> There's an owl and a fish, but Rick the hamster. <laughs> He was a badass mofo. Um, something you'll be playing tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday night, live streaming. The first DLC for Bio Bioshock Infinite Clash in the Clouds is out. What do you Finally, have to say about that? Some DLC. Unfortunately, it's an arena-based kind of leaderboard thing, <laughs> but uh, it's more Bioshock. I'm kind of in the mood for that, and uh, their plans for the future stuff, the story-based stuff, is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've been told, as someone that hasn't finished the game, that I should not look up anything about the new deal, the story DLC. Yeah, yeah, don't. It's probably <laughs> for the best. If, if you haven't finished Bioshock, anything that's about any sort of Bioshock, you should just not read. Okay. Um, but, I mean, so what are your thoughts on how long it's taken to actually get some DLC for Bioshock Infinite? Um, you know, it's taken way too long to get something like the DLC that came out today. Yeah. But in terms of the stuff down the line, I if they can make that quality and just like Infinite itself, then that's great. But the, the I guess this feels like the appetizer to tide you over, but it's coming way late. Yeah, you wonder if they've been sitting on it a while until they like kind of knew the schedule for the next um, yeah, story DLC. They, but They had to have this done a while ago. But there's a lot of internet fighting around, you know whether they should have announced this at the beginning like people like the fact that they're selling the season pass before announcing what was actually going to be in it was That's troubling true. some people but at the same time we always complain when they announce DLC before a game even comes out or like it yeah. seems like they've been holding that stuff back so um it was interesting just to see the other side of it oh a company that finished the game then moved on the DLC and it takes a couple months to actually make those announcements so um, yeah, it takes. It took a while, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. If they had said what was in this pack, then people would be like, "Oh, they already knew." But I mean, you don't have to buy the pass, right? Not knowing what's in it, and it wasn't until they said what was in it that I decided to buy the pass. Um, so you'll be playing that live tomorrow. I'll be curious to see um, how the combat feels for that, and yeah, at least an hour of that. Maybe some torchlight. <laughs> Maybe some torchlight. We'll see. It depends on how much I like this. Um, you were pretty excited about Rise of the Triad. Are you picking that up? 
I was, and then I made several purchases that aren't that one. <laughs> I made several purchases like a car. Like a car. So I don't know. I never pre-ordered that and got its whole... It came with a bunch of older games, I believe. And they might still have that offer going, but I don't know. I, It's, it's hard to say with shooters. I haven't played a whole lot of shooters lately. And I feel like I need something interesting to actually make me want to shoot at things again. <laughs> but uh, if this one goes on sale, maybe in the the winter... Okay. The triad will rise. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to talk Ethan into playing that game. I said if if it's up your alley, it has enough explosions for you that it it might be entertaining to watch you play it. Um, I'll be playing Castle Storm, which just came out on PC um, earlier this week. It's from the creators of Pinball FX, and it's basically kind of like a tower defense slash physics based castle castle destruction game. So we'll see how that plays. Um, and then I'm also excited that Skulls of the Shogun gets a wider PC release. It was previously just a Windows 8 release. Um, yeah. That's coming to Steam with a bunch of um, bunch of new additions for Steam, but multiplayer, turn-based strategy, cool Shogun setting, and... Um, trading cards. And trading cards. <laughs> 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 but um, it's, gotten a, it's gotten great critical acclaim, so I'm really curious to try it out. Um, I'm kind of hit or miss with with turn-based strategy games, but I'm going to give that a shot later in the week as well. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in that one. And then at the end of the week, Cloudberry Kingdom, which was, I believe, shown a lot at E3 and may have been a part of the... It's basically out for everything, but this is a platforming game that it's easy to dismiss when you first glance at it until you realize that it can randomly generate all of its levels and um, kind of the tech behind it's pretty uh, pretty impressive and um, so I'm looking forward to trying that one out uh, those were my three purchases already this week <laughs> yeah, yeah I was spying on your steam purchases and saw that and I was like the name of it alone raises an eyebrow as to you know what exactly kind of game is this Cloudberry Kingdom? Yeah, I, I dismissed it pretty quickly at E3, but when I heard people talking about uh, about the level generator in it, um, I want to I want to try that out. I like platformers, so um, there's some new DLC for Black Ops 2, um, oh Pixel boy. Junk Monsters for the Vita, Fatal Frame 2. Crimson Butterfly for PlayStation Network. I still need to play a Fatal Frame frame game. I've now. never played a Fatal Frame, but I know what they're about. <laughs> there are a couple of them already on the PlayStation Network, um, so I'll have to check that out. There's also a <laughs> uh, game called The Last Bounty Hunter, which I dismissed until I read that it's a old-fashioned light gun game. It's kind of like Mad Dog McCree. <laughs> um, so that's, that's out for downloadable. And... And also just... I, so I've started browsing uh, this site called Indie Static, static with a K, dot com. Um, and so they review or preview a ton of indie releases, like just stuff you don't hear of. You, you usually hear about indie releases after the fact, and these are, you know, yeah. trying to get ahead of the game a little bit. Um, they also have some pretty random stories and caught my attention when they found a golf ball, driving range golf ball picker upper simulator. <laughs> demo game that's out there and then follow that up the next day with a sim of a robot vacuum cleaner so a, a lot I'll post, of picking up I'll post, <laughs> yeah, I'll post links to those but those they're so weird um, and probably incredibly boring but awesome probably. <laughs> um, I thought I'd throw those out there so I'll post links to those as well what's going on in a person's life that they think I'm going to make a golf ball picker up or something <laughs> I mean, I get the robot vacuum cleaner because I've heard people are just unnaturally attached to those, at, like as pets or yeah. Uh, but yeah, the golf ball picker upper thing intrigued me just because I used to hit, hang out as a, at the driving range and try to you know annoy the hell of that out of that guy uh, as he was driving around <laughs> on the driving range. But um, it's a dangerous job, it or is. really boring depending on how you look at it. So, a really great. Uh, on to the games you've been playing. What have you been up to the last week or so? I've been playing a lot of Torchlight 2 again. And 
it's still it's still just great. It's fun. I've gotten only slightly farther than I did the first time I started playing. I actually made it to Act Two just this weekend. I don't think I've made it that far. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite jarring when you're so used to the just being in the kind of central hub, that kind of grassland, rivery kind of place, and then it took me to like a desert, and I'm like, oh, this is different. I must be making progress. But yeah, I still like getting loot, clicking stuff. My Ember Mage is treating me well. I will, I will have to stream some more of that at some point. Maybe actually finish the game. It, streaming it keeps me compelled enough. I think I would push play. you to. I mean, don't take a break from it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would be I my advice. Because, you know, with both Torchlight and Borderlands, I keep taking breaks and then feeling like I need to restart every time I play. But keep pushing through it because I like yeah. to. I like to talk to somebody that's actually finished that game. I think Ethan has, but I think he's he uh, hasn't wanted to talk about it for whatever reason. So, <laughs> some bad things must happen at the end. Yeah, some horrible, horrible things. <laughs> uh, but more excitingly, I picked up Teleglitch Die More Edition. I knew nothing about it. I looked at pictures, and I'm like, this game looks terrible. Like it can't, yeah, it looks like someone threw up <laughs> on an old PC, and. <laughs> they want to charge you money to play it. But it's actually really fun. I don't know why. It's kind of a top awesome. down um kind of it's got roguelike elements. You it kind of randomly generates levels and you pick up different items. You can start with different items. You fight enemies and just try to make it to the next level. So it's kind of a, a dungeon crawler of sorts. Just you're maybe in space and there's mutants and zombies. Okay. But I played that for a few hours this weekend, and it was a uh, it's a lot of fun. And at one point, I I broke the map and was outside of the level. <laughs> and I took a picture of that and put it on my Twitter. <laughs> and then I had to slowly make my way back to the level where I I think immediately died as soon as I got back in and entered a room full of like dozens of enemies. <laughs> but you're, you're braver than I was, like, cause just looking at a few of the videos and the screenshots, it just I, I feel like I'm building up this um, elitism around some of these indie retro releases. Like, like, well, that one, that one yeah. looks like crap. That one can't be good. Like, because they all <laughs> have their certain style. And you know, most of the time, like eighty percent of the time, I kind of fall for these games. And so, but I'm trying to get. I guess I feel like I need to get pickier and not just you know assume That's they're all good yeah. because they look retro. And I don't know. This one, this one just didn't. I wrote it off pretty easily, so I was kind of curious that you uh, that you dove in. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not the greatest game ever, but it's got this charm to it. It's definitely the charm's not so much in the look, but it's just I guess in the atmosphere it kind of brings to it. It's 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 really frightening for how simple it looks. Just to actually watch someone to play it, stuff doesn't look that scary, but. Um, there's like this real kind of weight to using weapons and hoping you have the right stuff. And I've blown myself up with dynamite accidentally several times already. <laughs> and um, it's, I had to watch someone else play. I had to watch a couple of YouTubes and read some old reviews. Apparently the regular edition came out back in January. So there was enough content out there to see that people enjoyed this game. And it might be worthwhile <laughs> dipping into the Steam Die More edition. But I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm awesome. going to play a little bit more. I don't know if I'll finish it before I start writing a review, but I I think I've played more than enough that I could say a few things. And what was it? What is it? Five, ten bucks? It's uh, like twelve ninety nine, which is a okay. weird number to $13 <laughs> for this game, but there's, there's some quality in there. You can get awesome. more than your money's worth out of some tele-glitching. Cool. Yeah, I didn't expect that one at all. Me neither, so fun surprise. I had credit on GMG, so I didn't really pay anything for it. <laughs> and then, uh, finally, as always, Animal Crossing. It never goes away. I'm getting scared, though, of New Leaf, because this week I actually didn't play the stock market, so I have uh -huh. no turnips, and there have been a couple times I've changed my uh, my ordinance. I had the night... The night owl one, so yeah, of course, supposed to stay up late. And finally, I'm like, ah, I'm sick of watering all the flowers, so I changed it to the beautiful one. Keep all the flowers, no weeds. So sometimes I'll forget to play the game until like nine o'clock, and, and then when down. I go, yeah, all the stores have been closed for an hour, 
and I can't buy anything, and I'm like, well, this is dumb, and I can go to the island and catch beetles, but I'm like, that's boring. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so now I'm getting afraid that I might have to stop playing Animal Crossing. It's <gasps> it's going to ooze out of my system. I still don't have apples. Yeah, I'm still missing apples, too. Um, well, let's take this opportunity, since no one's here to stop us. No one. Um, chat in the past has complained that they don't know what the hell we're talking about so let's walk through what is, what is your daily routine in animal crossing at this point when you load it up what do you what yeah. do you do first my daily routine if i have any mail i pick it up and usually it's from my dumb neighbors my dumb villagers <laughs> saying some random inane stuff sometimes giving me a, a crappy shirt so i immediately queue that up to be sold immediately <laughs> do you have any neighbors that you like I uh, I actually do. Uh, there's a female squirrel named Hazel. She lives not that far away from me, and she <laughs> and I we we have some fun times together. I, whenever I see her, I actually feel good about her existence. Good. And I actually have another female squirrel that name is Agent S, and she wears a helmet. But for I some met reason, her. She's kind of yeah, crazy. She's kind of weird, and then I don't know if she's actually a spy or anything, right. but she just wears a helmet. Maybe she's special, but who knows? <laughs> but but Hazel, I like her a little bit more. She's got red hair and little brown squirrel and we we talk i'll go out of my way to talk to her and she'll play games to give me furniture and stuff so i like her and uh i guess while i'm on that subject it seems like maybe just randomly villagers want to leave and you can talk to them or they'll send you letters and they're like well i've decided on this day of the month i'm gonna go you know move to a different village and you get the option to say oh no please don't go or hey that's cool be gone you know you idiot (laughs) <laughs> and be so, gone, you idiot. Yeah, be gone, you idiot. And so sometimes, for the first few times this happened, I'm like, no, please don't go. And then they they always decide to stay. And then one time, I told a guy, uh, yeah, Dude. I don't really care. You know, get out of here. And he was the dragon guy. <gasps> which, you know, dragons seem like they're awesome, but I don't know. He was kind of weird to me out. He needs some validation from his mayor. Yeah, and so I'm like, oh, you'll be fine. You know, go out and tackle that big world. And he was like, What? You're okay with me going? You seem like you don't care. I'm an acquired taste. I'm gonna stay here. You'll you'll learn oh, to love shit. me. And I nearly tossed my 3DS across the room. <laughs> Can't get rid of these people. I'm like, no one will ever leave. I say, don't go. They stay. I say, go. They stay. <laughs> I have no idea. No, they'll. We know. We know from the fact that I lost my good buddy Bones. Bones. That, Where did he go? <laughs> They they will randomly leave your town and it's it's kind of a big deal. So all right, you so, got your you you wake up, you get your mail, you check your mail, you sell whatever dumb shit they've given you. What's your next task? My next task is a quick run around the village with my shovel out to dig up any fossils and or pitfalls and or gyroids. Fuck the that pitfalls. might be literally my uh, village just cluttering up the place with the little X's. So once I do that, I head up to the shopping district, and uh, I have uh, stupid bladders. I have him assess my fossils to most of the time tell me he, the museum already has them all, so I can sell them for money. But Yeah, so the um, owl, the same owl runs the museum. First of all, he has like the longest talking sequence in the game. He is the worst. But you have to see him every day if you want to donate your, fo- your fossils to your museum to like boost the culture of your your town um but after you've done this for like two weeks he you most of the fossils you've dug up most of the common fossils and you're just waiting to find the r- rare ones but if you yeah. visit him during the day which if you want to like visit your shops and you don't have the basically you haven't enacted the ordinance as mayor to make your shop stay open later you're probably going to be playing during the day you wake him up because yeah. he's a freaking owl so there's an extra like conversation sequence that happens when you wake him up and then you have to talk talk through him to actually donate and assess these fossils and it, yeah that's that's probably the worst part of the game in my opinion it is, it is literally the worst and it also sucks if you tap b or hold it down i don't know i always tap it i just slam my thumb down on the b button forever you can make the text go a little bit faster, but if you just kind of zone out and keep tapping B, you'll cancel out of every kind of option you can make, and you'll yeah. be like, oh, well, come back to me when you need something, and you have to start all over again. So you need to pay attention, but he says the same thing every time. Yep. And so it's, it's so it's, deliberate, and 
It's the most infuriating, infuriating part of Animal Crossing, but it, it we really all is. stick through it. <laughs> so he assesses my fossils. If there's anything he can take, he takes it, and then I make my run through each of the stores to see if there's anything amazing so, that randomly shows up. Did you play any of the other Animal Crossings? The last one I had was Wild World, I believe, and that okay. was on the DS. Okay. Because the ta- the the city, I mean the the shopping district itself is so much so far beyond anything that was in the regular Animal Crossing and I don't even remember it in Wild World. I'm assuming yeah. they be- they built it up in the in City Folk, which was the Wii version. But That's um, my guess. So, it used to be that you just had Tom Nook's store um, and then, and then like the um, the fabric place where you could buy T-shirts and make T-shirts and make your own patterns. But yeah, um, so far I've unlocked. You've got the store, which is actually run by Tom Nook's kids. You've got Tom Nook's like real estate place where you can buy like add-ons for your house. You've got the post office uh, where you have your ATM where you can make deposits and pay back your loan. Yeah. Um, and some of the newer editions of the flower shop, which is the most pointless of all the stores, I think. <laughs> is there anything yeah. like cool? Like, does anything ever happen with that store other than just go in there and buy the three flowers that they have and the <laughs> the one tool that they'll give you? But I haven't seen any changes to that one. That that sloth. I think his name is Leaf. He's so stupid. <laughs> he's like he's like stupid in a kind of an adorable way in the yeah. fact that those two flowers and that tree he sells you all he cost never remembers like how much they cost. Yeah. He never remembers. There are 60 <laughs> bells or 80 bells. This is some cheap stuff, and he never remembers the price of these. He's, he's always surprised day oh, after yeah. day. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's 60, 60. I'm like, I think he's on drugs. I mean, he's the gardener. He's, he's got to be like, growing <laughs> weed somewhere in that tiny little shack of his. But uh, starting today, I went to check my stores. I was home from work a little early, and so I'm like, I'll check them so they don't close on me. And... The um, the main store run by Nook's Kids and his store are now both under construction together. So I believe they're merging. So, yeah. Um, I just actually had the... I don't remember if the layouts are any different. The It looked like the flower shop and the fabric shop were under construction. They added basically a like a haircut place that I really haven't visited. I've gone in there, yeah. Okay, the okay. So you're probably getting you're getting whatever the the last remaining store that I don't have is then. So I don't even know what that's going to be. Yeah, something um, like that. Because I've because they've also got the you know the haircut place. They've got the um the fabric place for buying t-shirts and also the headgear place where you can buy wigs and glasses and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Because the the other thing they added for this. Like it used to be, you just could change your shirt, but now you can change your shirt, your pants, your shoes, your socks, your your hat, and whatever you want to put on your face. Those those are all the customization op- options. And right now, I don't know if you saw my character last time he came into town, but you had a hockey mask the last time. I saw <laughs> so I'm you. wearing this like I forget what they called it, but it's basically like a tie dye shirt, but essentially it's like kind of red around the neck, and then it fades to white. Oh my god! So yeah, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like blood. <laughs> he's wearing a hockey mask and then I bought this like mohawk wig <laughs> and I am I am one terrifying looking mare so um, you can also buy shoes and then there's the there's the club club lol the club. <laughs> um, which is run by a like a failed comedian that if you feed him during the day he'll give you emotes to use for various things that's like one of the most random parts about the game but this I've is where KK K.K. Slider plays on Saturday nights, and I still have yet to get any music from him. Really? Yeah, because I keep... Just, for, so keep forgetting? Wa- walk through the process. Like, so, every night, there's there's the K.K. I forget the... What, DJ... It's like, yeah, DJ Slider or DJ yeah. K.K. It's DJ K.K., I think. Yeah, so it's kind of like, like... So every night, there's, a, like, uh, the DJ playing in this dance, this, this dance club. But on Saturday nights, at, like, 8 p.m., from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., the acoustic stylings of K.K. Slider, the dog, um, he's, he's so in cool. concert, and I forget the actual sequence because I've been there twice but didn't wait around to try to get the music. So how do you actually get music from him? So to get music, you walk in, you, you give him a chat. He says, uh, he's like, hey, how are you feeling? You want me to just play a random song? You have a mood that you're in? 
and then he'll play the song. It rolls the credits over this because what else are you going to do? Yeah. But the music's pretty great, so I usually just put the 3DS down, and I just relax for a while and just listen to it. <laughs> and I'm sure my wife probably hates this music because all the Animal Crossing yeah, noises yeah, are just like, yeah, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. It, but I'm like, something so soothing about these noises to me, just being in this Animal Crossing atmosphere. But when it's over, I think the first time he tells you, I've slipped the music into your pocket, which is so weird because he was just playing Whoa. up on the stage. <laughs> Whoa. So I'm like, at what point did he slip the music into my pocket? And so, yeah, you should just get the music by listening to a song. And so I've got three so, of the songs right now. Yeah, so two, I've been in there twice, and both times, like, the club manager tells me not to interrupt him. So, like, I just kind of hung out. And nothing happened, and I couldn't talk to anybody, so I left. So oh, I don't know what I, I was missing. I like, do you have to show up at like ten o'clock when he's done. I've been showing up at just whenever. All right. I think he starts at eight. I just walk in there. I don't even talk the, to the club manager. I go straight to the stage and talk to KK. And this is the best part, best slash worst part about Animal Crossing is the fact that everything happens in real time, and it happens at set times in this world. There are set yeah set days that you know. Your your bug catching event happens and it only takes place during during those times and if you're not there you you miss it and you wouldn't most of the time you wouldn't know you missed it uh, unless you knew it happened and then then it starts to eat away at you in, from the inside so um, but yeah I still need <laughs> to get the ultimate reward of getting the KK Sliders music so you can put it in your house so it's yes. so you're playing your favorite music every time you come back to your house I'm trying to make a music box. <laughs> to have one of his songs in it. I think I actually have it sitting in the uh, retail store. And, yeah, like you're saying, everything being in real time, uh, once you wake up one of the alpacas in that store, the husband of mm -hmm. the, the two, he'll actually customize furniture and build stuff for you. And he's always like, come back in an hour or come back in 30 minutes. So it was maybe two days ago I gave him the ingredients to make that music box he said come back in 30 minutes and I have still not remembered to pick it up until oh, now he's pissed he's gonna it's turn it into something else there. yeah he, he probably spit in it or something I think the worst thing with the timing is is so um well actually so you've you finished doing your your sales trip then at that point I would go around and talk to all the villagers to see if they have any tasks for me. So you yeah. I just randomly will generate tasks from deliver this to my friend or let's play hide and seek or um, sometimes they'll say come over to my place and check out my house and usually they'll give you stuff when you go there. Yeah. But they always well some sometimes they'll say come over now, sometimes they'll say come over later and you have to pick a time, which is 45 minutes to uh, 45 minutes or later so yeah. you have to either keep playing the game or you come back later that evening to come hang out in this digital house and that always blows my mind so i always I, forget <laughs> yeah. it's like no come back at 6 p.m tonight and i was like well i should probably be eating dinner with my family but you know hold on i gotta go check out check out this pig's house and see if she's got any <laughs> shit yeah, it's hard to plan just when exactly do i think i'll be free and thinking about animal crossing to actually go visit someone's house, look at all their dumb stuff, and then be like, well, that was fun spending this last two minutes with you. But I've actually had a villager get mad because I scheduled two in the same day. I remembered one of them just barely because they're like within 10 minutes of each other. And I'm like, oh, I missed the first one, but I remembered the second one. And I saw that villager later, and he was Pissed. like, he was like, you totally flaked, Aaron. <laughs> And the villagers like, hold grudges, man. Yeah, they get mad, and uh, I like they do hold some horrible grudges. I found, um, I think I went to deliver a present for one of them, one of these tasks you're talking about, and I, in the span of five minutes, forgot I was doing that. Saw the present in my inventory, and was like, "What did I pick up this present?" and opened it, and then I was like, "Oh my god, this isn't mine." Yeah, I I did that with the, they gave me a time capsule to bury. Yeah. Um, which is, so they just, they give it to you and it puts it in your letters, which is weird. So it's not in your main inventory, it's in your letter inventory. And so I see it sitting there and, and like, it looks like a letter with a present attached to it, which is totally normal. Yeah. So I thought I had to like grab the present away from the letter and I ended up opening the time capsule and just like... <laughs> really pissing this dude off like why in the hell would you do that why would you open my time I've, capsule i have an open time capsule in my inventory right now and i refuse to tell her i've opened 
I just will never talk to that villager again. She will move away, never knowing I've opened her time capsule. Yeah, that's easily the worst thing I've done to these people, is open their time capsules. Just but. open their capsules. But every now so I've buried like four or five of those. You know, I've been playing this game for what? I've been playing for like a month, month and a half. How long has this yeah. been out? But so now the time capsules are starting to show back up, and they'll like they'll randomly be in one of those X's that you dig for fossils, and you'll dig up one of the oh, time so. capsules you buried, and every time it's a fucking T-shirt. That's all that they've stored in yeah. there. They they store a clever note to themselves and a T-shirt, and most of the time they will give you the T-shirt as a reward. So I was like, wow, thanks for making me wait wait six weeks for this T-shirt I didn't want, but <laughs> this gross T-shirt you used to wear. But I still do their tasks anyway, in, in hopes that someday something cool will really ha- will actually happen. Like bones will come back. Yes. Yeah. All right. So we've done <laughs> He's our the shopping. Puppet master. We've dug our fossils, done our shopping, done the tasks for the villagers. What what's what's left? At that point, it starts to just fall into like the B tier list of what can I do to keep playing this game a little while longer. Um, I I might you, go fishing. I might catch bugs in a net. Do you I, s- at one point, I was trying to restructure my trees to have all fruit trees and no non-fruit trees oh. it, can, it can go really deep <laughs> and uh holy crap so if you look online there are people that make really elaborate patterns and then lay those down to create pathways in their village and i was like oh that's kind of cool i could see this being like a pretty you know intensive project to spend you know a little bit more time in this game and be invested and so I started building a path, and I was like, oh, this, the interface of this is just so stupid, though. It's like <laughs> it's not made for this kind of thing, but it lets you do it in that you just have to open up that menu and then select the pattern, say place it on the ground. It puts down one, and then you have to just keep repeating this over and over and then moving slightly and hoping you're building the right path. It's it's very just so OCD. It's like, <laughs> so is it like just – so it would be like just a path of trees, like – uh, or like, are you doing with this with flowers too, or? Well, yeah. You like ideally you would put down like bushes and trees and flowers along okay. these patterns that you're using to create your pathways. <laughs> and so I had started to do that, and you could, and I had them like all leading into the front of the buildings. So you just wow. walk the path to the building. And at one point, I just happened to hear the whooshing sound of a present on a balloon. <gasps> And I was like, oh, whoa, what's that? And so it was going by my coffee shop, and I look up, and it's got three golden balloons strapped to it. I'm like, oh, my God, it's the golden slingshot. (laughs) And so I line up, I shoot it down, but because I started to put pass down, it was right at the front of the uh, coffee shop, the game can only put an item on the ground if there's a place within the spot where it tries to go down where it can actually have it rest peacefully. Yeah. And because there was pathway and building, it just vanished into <gasps> hell. <laughs> and I put my controller, I, I put the 3DS down ever so carefully, closed the lid, and every word out of my mouth for like the next minute was just, ah, oh, <laughs> ah, ah. Like, just, 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 I, like, I was just, no words. I got up and I found my wife. And. This is like the fun part about being like in your late twenties. You're an adult. You go to a job. You earn money. You pay bills. And I go talk to my wife to tell her, I shot a present down and it vanished into nothing. I got nothing for it. I have nothing. I'm playing a game and my present's gone. My golden slingshot. And how much sympathy did she have for you? She was like, oh. <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's too bad. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I would have just stewed in in silence because no one could relate to my story until I pulled you on a podcast to talk about it. So it it was devastating, and that was maybe like ten o'clock at night. And so the rest of my night, I was trying to forget, but I just couldn't. But the funny thing about New Leaf is that this game is like sentient, and it is horrible because the next day. I hear a balloon go by. I look at what time it is. And I'm like, balloon might be going by around about now. Same balloon, three golden balloons, and the golden slingshot. And I was like, the very next day. Wow, that doesn't happen. And so the first thing I do is 
is there anything around here that will just screw up my entire life for the second time? And there was nothing, so I shot it down. I got the slingshot, and the glee that filled my body for that next ten minutes was so great until I realized, what the hell am I going to do with the golden slingshot? Yeah, what's that? I don't even remember what the golden tools actually do, so... Sometimes, uh, I guess, sometimes they produce better results or they last longer. Like in the case of the axe, I think the axe will never yeah. break if it's golden. The golden slingshot fires three pellets. But what? Like, so you could shoot down three balloons when they only show up in one? Yeah, the only use for it is when you go to the island oh, where okay. there are mini games, and one of them is to shoot out balloons, and if you play okay. that hardest difficulty, a gold... Well you, can't, well, you can't even take the golden slingshot there, so never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, so yeah. yeah, there's no point. I mean, I dig, dig good enough holes. I don't really need the uh, golden shovel. Um, <laughs> it's gold. That's yeah. the only reason. It's, it's a tiny reward for slaving away in New Leaf. Um... To wrap this up, I mean the the island's worth mentioning just because that's kind of the 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 thing they've added that will keep you busy when you're kind of just sick of your routine in your town. You board a board a ship, hear a funny song by a tur- turtle, uh, actually some <laughs> creepy songs too. I I snap I snapped a picture of one of his lines that kind of I snapped so many pictures of this. Um, and then you get to the island and there's like. You know, more rare insects and that kind of thing that you can catch on the island. And there's uh, four or five mini games at a time that you can go play and just basically just run around and try to try to do these tasks on a timer to achieve medals to buy things on the island that you can't get in your town. And yeah, uh, so that was a nice nice addition that like there's always something to do there if you're sick of your people, <laughs> basically. <And> you're <laughs> if you're not, sick of society and you can't like get online and jump into your friend's town and that sort of thing. Um, but the only, the, the thing that I've liked the, the most, um, from the collection side of things now, back on the original animal crossing on GameCube, they used to give away like the, the ultimate, um, items to find for me were they had old NES games that were buried within oh, yeah. the game. Like you could Those are great. unlock excite bike in animal crossing. I don't have anything like that here, but they have, fortune cookies that you can buy in the store run yeah. by Tom Nook's kids. Um, and you use your play coins, which are accumulated just by playing the 3DS and walking around with it and having it on. Um, so you buy these fortune cookies, you get the fortune, and I think there's probably 50 of them, I, I, if I had to guess. It just Maybe. chooses one at randomly. And then you turn in that, that fortune, and you get two of these a day, um, and they'll give you a random special item, which are usually like an item from a Nintendo game, like a like a super mushroom or um, a like the ship from Pikmin or the Triforce, that sort of thing. And yeah. collecting all that stuff, that's all I give a shit about. I do that all the time too. That's part <laughs> of my routine. And right now, I have the entire Lynx outfit. I finally got every oh, piece wow. of that. And then there's still room for an accessory, so I have an eye patch. <laughs> nice. I don't have any of the. I don't have any of his outfit. I have like. I have the Master Sword and the Triforce for my house. Because all I collect yeah. is Nintendo stuff from the Fortune Cookies and Gyroids. And Gyroids are just little robots um, that show up, what, the day after it rains? The day after it rains. The day after it rains, there are extra extra holes to dig. And they'll have, you'll dig up little robots. They're worth a lot of money, but they also make funny noises and dance in your house. So that's all I really care about. Kind of like the Destructoid robot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole basement full of gyroids. It's a it's a creepy dungeon. Um, but yeah, I think this is the longest break I've actually taken from Animal Crossing. I'm going on three days. Um, only now because... So I hit this point after I've taken two days off. Yeah. I just feel guilty when I sign back in. <laughs> Anytime I <laughs> sign back in and like... I don't know, for the first time this weekend, I'd taken like two days off and... Usually I try to go around and and say something to every villager just to check yeah. in with them. But I must have forgotten somebody the last time I played. So it had been like a week since I checked in with one of them. And so for the first time, one one of the characters gave me shit for had, not having seen them for a week. And I was like, oh, oh wow, I'm, I'm so I'm so sorry. And now I'm now I'm paranoid about going back and all of them judging me. So that makes me not play it a little bit more. So the, da- the downward spiral has begun. Um, but... 
I still want to play at least the the only piece of fruit. I think we decided what there's like seven or eight different kinds of fruit um, that you can yeah. collect in this game. Your your town starts off with one, and you have to find the others on the island or from friends' towns or from uh, um, the villagers will randomly give them to you. That's how I got um, two of two of the missing fruit that I had. But there's we Aaron and I are both missing uh, the apple. But once we ha- once I can make apple yeah, trees, cool. I will have all the fruit in the game, and that's really that's kind of the end of it, I think. <laughs> once you have all the fruit, yeah. you're done. But but I don't know. I mean, I still the game's also. Um, I mean, therapeutics a little he- heavy in the <laughs> as a description, but like it's just really soothing to play this game for yeah, about yeah. a half hour a day or half hour every other day, and just I don't know. It's it's. It's very calming, and I. Yeah. That's kind of why I keep it around. It's not necessarily fun, but it's just, it's an, it's enjoyable, harmless, simple, and kind of peaceful in that regard. So yeah, it's it's very unlike a lot of other games. I mean, tons of games either are very violent or they're sports. And yeah. so when you have an Animal Crossing that where you could just hop into it and do something dumb like cry because your golden slingshot vanished into nothing. <laughs> It's. I recommend it. I think it's a it's a good game. It's. I find it hard to actually put a real review kind of score on it, but it's like if you are in the mood for this kind of thing, it's it's good at what it does, but it could be better. <laughs> and and it's easy to rip 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 this game. Like I get it. It's easy to make fun of, but it's also been kind of rewarding to play it and see. I've said this before, but just seeing on social media, just seeing the amount of people that are playing this game and it's selling really well and actually kind of helping Nintendo and that this game is kind of having a resurgence is, uh, it's been fun to be a part of that. Yeah. Social media has really made it just fun. Yeah, but to, I, to I think play. without, without that and without somebody else that was playing it, I would have, I would probably wouldn't have ever gotten it. So yeah, um, I can understand that, but it's fun to kind of feel a part of that little zeitgeist around Animal Crossing. Tom um, Nook, gotta get paid. Well, I really didn't play too much in the last week. I, like I said, I haven't been feeling very well. Lots of stuff um, going on. Um, but so Sunday night, I was attempt. I was going to attempt to stream Skyrim, um, but just didn't have a voice and um, had a headache and all that stuff. So I was trying to find just a low pressure, low thinking game that and I just nothing was nothing was hitting for me and I so I started looking through my library and um I ended up playing home and home. I know Ethan I know Ethan's played this but this is a just a little simple indie adventure game I wouldn't even call it point and click um it's barely a game even that it, it's wow. just um simple side scrolling 2D graphics pixel art that kind of stuff type of stuff and you just walk around and you have an interact button and you just basically are this guy. You start off in this house. You don't know where you are and you keep wandering and, and finding clues to figure out how you got here and what happened. And it becomes kind of a, a harrowing, harrowing horror tale. You don't know. It's full of mystery. You have no idea what's happened. It's kind of tense and just very confusing. And... <clears throat> When it comes down to it, it's about an hour long. Um, there's really... Well, well, you get to... You can explore it a little bit and find additional details. There's only one way to really play the game, one outcome. But it does this kind of brilliant thing in the end where it just... It wants to know your interpretation of the story. How did you fill in the blanks? What do you think think happened? And then encourages you to share that basically on the game's forums, and it kind of blew my mind. That's interesting. <laughs> um, so I, and that's pretty much all I can say without like spoiling any of the story. But you know, at first I was kind of playing it, and I was like, "This is kind of like you know a choose your own adventure game," and um, like I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it if you're like looking for something action oriented. But if you've you've got an hour to kill and want something that feels a little bit different and just want a story. Um, it's really effective at what it does and kind of twisted too at the same time. So, um, hmm. really atmospheric, um, well, well done. I hope to see more stories from, uh, whoever developed this, but, uh, I was glad I, glad I finally sat down to play it and I apparently was in the perfect mood for it. Cause 
I didn't have to think at all, and all I had to do was move left and right and hit the A button. So <laughs> <laughs> Those are always good. So was this a game you'd been sitting on for a while, or I mean, it wasn't I, the recent sale, was it? No, I've had it. I've, I probably bought it okay. in one or two Steam sales ago, because Ethan reviewed it at some point last year, and uh, so I kind of flagged it at that point. Yeah. And then I actually had it confused with um, Lone Survivor, which you played. Yeah, I, I reviewed that one. <laughs> and I tried to get into that, but that was a little bit too deep. That's got, like, inventory management and, like, just more more things going on. This was just very straightforward and exactly what I was... Lone Survivor is probably a little more stressful than Home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Home was not stressful at all. It was just more of, oh, shit, I kind of want to know what happened. And then it's just like, yeah, you just start to kind of question a lot of things about your character, and it's it's really cool. So <laughs> Hair color. Yeah. <laughs> His shoes. <laughs> Stupid flashlight. How much battery does that flashlight have? How much battery? Um, the arcade challenge of the week. This week we're playing Tapper. Um, the I think there's a couple different versions of this game, but this is like the original one that was sponsored by Budweiser. Um, do you know anything about this one, Aaron? I assume it's the kind of beer serving. Yeah. Kind so of the game. Yeah. Just essentially there's four bars, um, four long bars that customers are kind of sliding uh, constantly from left to right. Um, and as soon as they pop up on the bar, you have four taps along the side. And you have to move to the tap and throw, basically slide a beer down to them um, to get them to go back. And they'll send their empty empty mugs back, leave tips, and then more people will come. And basically it's a, it becomes a skill-based game. And... Um, it's really quirky. I love its sense of humor because the, basically the, the, the barkeep, he kind of looks like a generic version of Mario. He'll <laughs> do all these like little silly animations when you beat a level, like he'll throw a glass up and it'll, a, a mug up and it'll like land on his head or it'll, he'll try to kick it and it'll crash. Or at one point he throws it really high in the air and he knocks a duck out of the sky and the duck falls on his head. It's just like kind of whimsical that way and really, really random. Um, and the first two levels are easy enough. They're like, you know, they only, like, one or two customers will show up per per bar at a time. But then uh, once you get to about the third or fourth stage, three, four, or five customers show up at a time, it gets pretty frantic. So um, we're playing for high scores again, and it's already been a pretty big hit just because it's, it's simple. There aren't, yeah. there aren't a lot of, like, some of the games we've been playing, like, have moments where you get like bonus points and combos and scores will just like skyrocket but this is this is just methodical this is just the very very like i said very skill based kind of kind of luck based depending on the the order that you or how many customers you get and the scenarios that happen there but um this one's been kind of embraced by the whole team so that's been been pretty fun and i've never played it seriously i've just kind of seen it i know it i knew yeah, of tapper too. because it has a pretty unique arcade cabinet that actually comes with um, taps <laughs> as if you were actually pouring <laughs> beer um, and yeah it it holds up it like I used to think it was only kind of a classic because it was the beer game like um, there's actually after the first two stages there's a mini game that <laughs> you you see basically a row of beer cans Budweiser beer cans and this little hamburger looking dude that runs along and shakes <laughs> shakes all of them up except for one, and then they shuffle all all of the beer cans, and you have to pick the one that isn't shaken up. Oh, that and, game! <laughs> or else it'll spray you in the face. Or but if you get the right one, it just you get the bonus points, and it says this bud's for you. And it was just like kind of <laughs> crazy how much the Budweiser stuff was actually tied into it. So it was uh, I I was I'm surprised at how much we liked the game because I kind of wrote it off. So. Some silly tie-in game. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good game. It's uh, there's some game I played not too long ago that had that it copied that style of gameplay, and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty much Tapper. So it's it still pops up from now. Yeah. Again. I want to actually yeah look into its derivatives just because it's a whole different. I mean, it's addicting in a different in a different style than a lot of the games that I've played to this point. And we've, I think this is almost our. I think this is our 19th uh, arcade challenge. So we've been through. That's a number, good number of games. So <laughs> that's a lot. Um, then I did play through the first, well, first stage of Earthbound. Basically, uh, you were watching that stream. Holy yeah. shit, is that game still charming? 
It's charming as hell. It's still weird. <laughs> it's got some great music, and I, I'm sure the the writers and developers were all passing the same drugs Leaf the yep. Sloth is, was on <laughs> when making this game. Um, it, it it's wow I. So I've played a lot of retro games. I mean, even since we just started streaming in the last year, like I kind of bounce bounce around between retro games. But this one's this one's gonna stick, and it's been the first game retro game in a while that I've thought about playing after I've been done with it. Like usually, it's like you just kind of get your nostalgic fix. You play it for an hour or two, yeah, yeah. And, you know. And and but going back for an extended play of a game that you've played several times, that's that's a whole different challenge. But Man, Earthbound has been top of mind since I um, first finished it, and uh, I think part of it is to do with that. I, I it's kind of understated in how challenging the game is. Like there is a, it's balanced really well for um, trying to make you make sure that you have leveled up enough to fight the fight the enemies, and it never yeah. it and it never it never gets frustrating but you you have to expect that you're going to die a couple times and it's going to be a, it's going to be you're going to restart and you'll build back up and you'll get through it because i remember that from my when i first played it just how difficult i th- thought the game was but but you never you never hit that point thing. of frustration there's there feels like there's a a pretty steep curve at least in the beginning even like sometimes games can go on and you'll just kind of blast through all the enemies and stuff but earthbound definitely has a curve going on to it and even from your stream, when you got to uh, watching you fight the crows, is <laughs> that might have been a really good flashback to the kind of stuff that happens in Earthbound. Just how many times you would miss, and the crow would just grin at you, and you're like, "You're gonna get your cookie stolen," and then the crow took your cookie. <laughs> and I was like, "This, this is the Earthbound uh, that's yeah. been sitting deep in my memory." Because <laughs> I thought to that point, you know, I had leveled up a little bit even before, like the kind of the first mini boss that you come across. And thought I'd had the game figured out. I was like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to stay a little bit ahead of where I need to be level wise, so I, these fights won't be a problem." It's like, "Yeah, it's no problem to fight these lower level guys when you hit them, but sometimes you just go on those streaks where I think I missed four or five times in a row, and yeah. then it's also so low level that they're not going to make that character attack you all the time. So that crow is just basically making fun of me. And <laughs> yeah, I think." You and I must have had that that same same moment where yeah this this is Earthbound and pretty um, much I was laughing the entire time so um, it's so yeah. it's fun to watch and that's good too <laughs> it's I was actually surprised I was kind of worried Ethan recently was playing Shadow Shadow Run Returns and tried to stream that and yeah. kind of discovered that that game's really really text heavy and not really fun to watch because of that and Earthbound's really text heavy but it's presented in an entertaining way. That I think yeah. um, the the live audience even got into, and I still, you know, having played this game, beaten this game three or four times in my youth, I'm still interested in reading every line just because of the sense, the sense of humor and the references and the music yeah. and I uh, just I I I still love this game and like it it you know this game is probably revered um you know more probably more than it deserves but for me um, it's 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 living up to its legacy, so that's been pretty cool. Definitely, almost makes the Wii U worth getting <laughs> just for a ten dollar game. They knew what they were, they knew what they were doing. They're like, so we're not gonna have any games that come out till pretty much August. Um, so for Virtual Console, what do you think if we release Super Metroid and Earthbound? <laughs> yeah, those will those will. I, I'm, I guarantee there are a lot of people that bought Wii U's just for the, those two just games. Just for those. And you could emulate those right yep. now. <laughs> yep. Um, the only other thing I was kind of into this past week was... Man. The competition's been, been high in the office uh, outside of the, the arcade challenge. And Coop and I were talking about um, some of the platforming games recently. We've been watching Indie Game the movie, and that brought up all of our Super Meat Boy memories and that sort of thing. <laughs> and so he jumped into playing Super Meat Boy on the PC, which, you know, I put like 30 hours into the console version. Yeah. But I didn't put any time into the, the PC version. And we had a pretty hefty back and forth on the th- on the 360 with our leaderboard. And so he was basically 
playing Meat Boy to just set the tone on the leaderboard. And then I, yeah. so I jumped in this weekend and had to take down like, um, you know, the first six or so levels and pleasantly surprised to find that like 10 or 12 of us are already on that leaderboard. And man, Meat Boy is, is it's a classic already. Like I play it like it's an older game and, um, I got to thinking, and I kind of wrote about this in The Horrible Gamer this week, that just leaderboards drive my interest in old games a lot. And now that some of these modern leaderboards can keep those scores for an extended amount of time, it's going to be fun to keep going back to these these games. Yeah, those it's good to have those leaderboards stick around because I sometimes I glance at them and I try not to get bothered by scores like that, but... I, for, I think one day, got interested in doing some Stealth Bastard, yeah. and you had, not too long ago, done a game curious of it, and I saw your score on one of those, and I was like, can I beat that time that Justin set? It's silly, it's, but it's motivating. Yeah. yeah, it's very motivating, and you get like nothing out of it but the satisfaction of either being the time or the other person gets the satisfaction of you being a loser and not <laughs> beating their time. Um, so that built onto I wanted to try out Trials Evolution on the PC for the same reason, jumping platforms. But fucking you play got Uplay, in my way. Uh yeah. I almost bought that. I mean I thought like because it's through Steam, hopefully it would use your Steam's friends list for that leaderboard, but no, it wants to use your U to Uplay friends list. I don't have any Uplay friends because we never, we we never hooked them up on the console and just Getting into that PC interface has just been been frustrating. So it was just kind of funny. I immediately put trials back down and started playing more Meat Boy because of it. So, um, so yeah, here's I'm hoping. To get, to... <laughs> I'm about to get trials on the 360 just because of Uplay and uh, way too many systems to go through just to play a game on the PC that way. Yeah, and this has all tied me over for the daily challenges that are coming to Spelunky when it comes out on PC. So. Oh man. Be ready, for, be ready for some Spelunky challenges. I love some Spelunky. We're going to die a lot, aren't we? We're going to be a lot of death. I want, we're going to force Josh, get Josh Lee to do some <laughs> Spelunky <laughs> on PC. I don't know if that's going to happen. Spelunky um, Fridays. All right, on to uh, what we're working on and what games we're going to be streaming coming up. Uh, what do you got in the queue, Aaron? Uh, I mentioned it earlier. I'm going to try to get a Teleglitch review. Uh, I plan on starting that sometime this week, but no huge rush on that if I don't. Sure. However, more importantly, like I also mentioned, Bioshock Infinite DLC streamed tomorrow. Probably won't write anything about that. I'm sure that footage will speak for itself. It's, sure. it's fairly new and not too deep. Uh, but I, I had a friend send me a gift copy of the ship which also comes with a second copy of it and so I kind of glanced through my list to see who didn't already own the ship on Steam and Ethan didn't have it and so I sent that to him just randomly because he he's given me a few games every now and then and so I sent him that not thinking much of it and he contacted me this morning saying at some point we should play the Steam, the ship together so I'm like well next week I'll be free <laughs> most of the week so yeah let's try to oh nice to, the ship going so we need to plan out that, that out a little bit more but i'm hoping we can have a stream or some kind of earlier in the day thing going nice i've got the ship for some reason i have two extra copies of that game i don't know why so <laughs> yeah so you should you should hand them out to people i might yeah i was gonna say i might give those away and then i've got extra copies of the uh pu puppy games bundle that was out last week oh yeah puppy games so i'll be giving those away on a future podcast so be on the okay. lookout for that yeah, uh, other than that, uh, Payday 2. So I was streaming Torchlight 2, and mm -hmm. I forget who was in my stream talking about pay, uh, Payday 2, but I tried out Payday once, the very first one, and I was like, ah, oh, this is all right. It's like a crime version of Left 4 Dead. I, <laughs> I get it, and I think I uninstalled it for something else. And he was talking a big game about Payday 2 being a lot better. I've watched a couple of streams lately, and it... There is something way too compelling about it now, and just watching four guys get together, or girls, I don't know, it's always <laughs> been guys so far, but just four people come together and just try to plan out this heist that always usually goes wrong, <laughs> except for the one instance that this team did it so right, like last night on a stream, they had everyone down on the ground, tied up a few people, no alarms were raised, 
and they like robbed a jewelry store. And I was like, they good did for that. them. Yeah, I'm like, they did that so well, and it really makes you think. I'm like, how well these four average guys just robbed a video game jewelry store, and all the things it makes you say. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just like get down on the ground. You got that guy tied up. I'm gonna have to shoot this guard in the head. Is that cool? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> and I'm like, they're saying some really just fucked up stuff, but I really, I'm, I might have to pick this game up. One of my friends says he's interested in it too. So in the future. I, I might try to get some payday too. I would suggest not using our Monaco crew for your <laughs> heists, because I, I always want Josh Lee, no matter what. If yeah, if he can dig through walls, if he for can you. dig through walls in payday too, yeah. I'm sure there'll be a mod at some point. We just knock through walls, and we'll make Josh do that all the time. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of games in the queue um, for my live streaming. It looks like, um, in addition to. I'm going to try to play Earthbound and Skyrim weekly, at least till I finish Earthbound. Who knows when I'll end Skyrim, but it's still fun. <laughs> Never. So. Um, but Castle Storm will definitely be this week. Also looking to do a Game Curious on Gunpoint. Um, oh, yeah. Because uh, I was going to do that, and I never did, so someone needs to. And you got, yeah, I mean, I still haven't played it, so I'm still curious, so I think I'll be... Um, it, yeah, it might work out better for you. I'm well-versed in how that game works by now. And then probably try to get some multiplayer for Skulls of the Shogun going if that game takes off. Um, okay. And then be on the lookout for random Super Meat Boy appearances because I'm going to start getting into the dark worlds and let's just stream that for a half hour and count how many times I die. So, um, was I actually bro- I actually brought back. So we did a Super Meat Boy challenge last summer, like May. Yeah. Um, and we forced Josh to play through the entire first dark world, and I pulled. Probably one of my favorite clips that we've ever done. Um, There's a level, um, 17 levels in, uh, where he dies 58 times. <laughs> and uh, this was back when Ethan was in town. So Ethan and I are commentating and just egging Josh on while he's trudging through this. But it's about a 10-minute clip. Um, I just threw that up on YouTube this week. But um, I was kind of revisiting that as I was going through the Super Meat Boy leaderboard. So I thought I'd throw up that clip because we... Um, we had had it on our Twitch channel, but never put it on our YouTube channel, so that's up there now. <laughs> I had um, forgotten that Super Meat Boy was the game that birthed Damn It Da, I think. No, actually, that's Isn't Trials. It? That's Trials? Oh, yeah, okay, it was Trials. I'm wrong. That, he, said, he said stuff in Super Meat Boy. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because because we haven't been live streaming the last few days. I've yeah. been going back to the archives, so I'm going to actually pull the Damn It Da clip as a highlight clip that, here. Yeah, that needs to be a highlight. In the next week, so or I so. don't forget which game it comes from, but I know he's he's shouted some nonsense during Super Meat Boy yes. back then too. Um, and then the two written articles that I'm working on is um, actually I don't, since the news last week where Activision became indie and bought <laughs> themselves out from Vivendi. Um, oh yeah, I've just been any positive light on Activision. Like I've been trying to look at what are the good things about Activision? So I'm working on an article related to that, also stemming from the fact that they don't have something like Origin or Uplay. Like, Blizzard's True. pretty locked down, but for the rest of Activision stuff, so I'm going to try to build off that and see if I can't find some positive st- things about Activision just just because. Um, more of like a, a research uh, type of piece. And then I'm going to... I jotted down some notes while I was playing home just about... Um, the different choices you have in story, because I was reading some of the reactions to that game and the fact that there you really don't have a choice because everything's just presented kind of in a linear fashion. But it, yeah. but again, it still kind of felt like your own tale and you're interpreting it um, and trying to trying to look at like where choice helps and hurts um, great video game stories. So there are um, a lot of examples of that out there. <laughs> I actually started that started the piece. After I finished Mass Effect three, but that's, never got yeah, anywhere with it. So while that's fresh, I'm gonna hopefully get some editorials out here in the next week or two. So all right, um, all right, gonna close the show. Game pitches. Um, you jotted something down um, during our our Animal Crossing talk. I'm gonna look through and see if anything else yeah. pops up. But why don't you kick us off here? All right. So one of the more damning things about Animal Crossing that we both seem to hate with great fury is just how much the villagers will talk and especially stupid blathers just going on and on 
and on and on. But then while we were talking about that, I thought, what if there was a game where you flipped Animal Crossing to where you were actually the villager and your goal <laughs> was just to talk nonstop to the player character and just try to disrupt their day as much as possible. But instead of it being like Animal Crossing where you're kind of blocked and standing still, that person can kind of move. And so they're trying to get away from you. But the more you talk and like you, maybe you get combos and stuff and you can just talk harder at them <laughs> and it slows them down. It's so like the point that maybe they're on the ground, like trying to crawl away. Like I got to sell these fossils to the store and you just talk harder on and you just talk harder <laughs> And they have like a stamina meter, and you can just talk them to death. <laughs> and then you just, you just keep, dungeon keepered Animal Crossing. Yeah, you just keep you talk all the people to death, and that's your goal is just to. to I mean, be I was the last one. I was thinking about like the serious implication of that would be like a negotiator type of game or like a filibuster <laughs> game, but I like the uh, taking it more with the Animal Crossing tone and just trying to basically, you know finally turn the turn it on its head and become the annoying NPC and see how yeah. long like basically the leaderboards for this are how long you've stalled this person from their adventure and maybe because of this you enabled um the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah years start going by the longer it happens like first like minutes are going by then days and it could and it could like actually by. like it could then after that person finally gets away from you it then does some sort of montage about the rest of their life and like the milestones that you <laughs> you made them miss because of your interactions and yeah that's like amazing it, that would be the best credits if they get away like you get some kind of you know like old 80s movies su- like summary of what happened in their future the, or like, no so you actually like they use you know parodies of historical figures and yeah. you go back in time kind of like red alert style and you try to like prevent oh, these, prevent these, like prevent evil villains from doing evil things by distracting them in their childhood, like <laughs> you know, taking away Hitler's magnifying glass when he's melting ants or something like that. But, like, <laughs> but it's all about distracting these horrible people when they're in like childish sh- scenarios, and to see if you can save the world. Oh, when you first started saying it, I I always like to default towards John Wilkes Booth and Abraham Lincoln. Okay, that would that would be a good and I was intro thinking, level. Like, John Wilkes Booth is like about to creep up on the balcony to shoot Lincoln, and all of a sudden I just saw like an animal from Animal Crossing just appear and start talking to him. Like, hey, what you doing there? I, you know, just, I got this shirt, and I really don't know what to do with it. If you can find a piece of furniture to fit into my house, and it just keep going on and on. And he's like, I I gotta kill the president. <laughs> But you're like just stalling him forever and ever, and at some point the play is over and Lincoln's gone. The, like the theater's empty, <laughs> the janitors are cleaning up. You're still Wilkes, talking to, and him. you're still talking to Wilkes. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get away. He's like, we ruined everything, but he can't leave because you're still talking about, you know, the buck catching contest next weekend. Can it be? Can you play as Blathers? Can it be like Blathers saves the world? Like redeem him in some way? <laughs> Blathers, yeah. Blathers back in time. That could be. Yeah, Tom Nook gets a time machine, and then Blathers accidentally goes into it, and you get sent to random levels and that are points in history, and you somehow change history because Blathers. Except Blathers would be screwed if it happened during the day, so we we might want a a character that can stay awake at all times. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Oh no, no! You're Mr. Rossetti. That's who you are. <laughs> or you could. Oh man, Rossetti's got more attitude. So yeah, I can see Rossetti stopping a would, bunch of horrible things. <laughs> Rossetti's Adventures in Time. That would be awesome. And he's got a brother too, so his brother could go. It's. <laughs> yeah, I would. I'd play as Rossetti. Like he's he's a, he's a sassy individual, and uh, could finally use his powers for good, other than just annoying yeah, me. Just judging people who accidentally turn their games off. He calls you like an idiot or a moron in one of the <laughs> yeah. games if you actually do that. It's that's pretty hurtful by Nintendo standards. Um, so I wrote down something different, but I'm gonna go with this because okay. the heist the heist games always intrigue me. Um, but just what other kind of four player, not necessarily four player, but co op scenarios like are out are still out there that we think we need to explore? Because I look at um. You know your your basic Borderlands sh- group shooters, your, yeah. your dungeon crawlers. When things like Assassin's Creed multiplayer and Left 4 Dead and uh, Payday and Monaco kind of came 
come about, like, and they make your group behave in a different way. I think there are other, I don't know, like, kind of action movie or just, like, genres out there that, that haven't been explored that I'd try to, like, to sc- kind of like to scratch the surface on that have that, like, yes, I want to do a heist. Like, what other, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if any of these heist games, do they do the getaway part? Like, I think Not- that could be... I was kind of going in that direction. I don't think many of them do the getaway. Like payday is all about the you know the score, the hit. You get the stuff, you get to the van, and then the level's kind of over. But I was kind of thinking like, what if there was a Fast and the Furious, you know, heist game? That'd be awesome. Where like you have to plan all this stuff out, and maybe like you guys have like your exotic sports cars. They're all souped up and stuff. But then it's not over once you've you know stolen the stuff, and then you're kind of you know, you two get in this car, and we'll get in this car, and we're going to go drive in, the cops are chasing after you, and someone's the decoy, and all the goods are actually in another car, but you have to make all these decisions that aren't just, you know, which which rep, you know, which route do we take, but sometimes, like, when do we shoot at these cops, and <laughs> or, uh, like, do we do something that leads them to believe that we are actually the car with all the goods, but it's actually the other car, and, mm-hmm. you know, it could... I could do a lot of stuff, like, you know, crossing the border type of things, like whether you're dealing drugs or running drugs or... Yeah. Um, I can't really think of anything that doesn't involve, like, really heinous crimes, but it still would be, you know... Human trafficking. <laughs> so many <laughs> people <laughs> the trunk. Like, uh, you know, like, I was yeah, say, people into the trunk. <laughs> I was going to say, snuggle, yeah. snuggle Truck tried that. Snug, they couldn't even yeah. get away with it. But, yeah, they, they had uh, the truck bed, so people, all the little stuffed animals were falling out. But, like, imagine if you had... Like, how many people can you comfortably cram into this car's trunk, and then you have to avoid hitting, like, all these potholes and going off ramps and stuff, even though ramps are awesome. Yeah. So you want to go off a ramp, but it's like, if you go off the ramp, the person in the trunk's going to take damage, and they might die. And then, you know, when you get back, you know, the guy, the boss man's not going to be happy if you deliver a trunk of dead people. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> womp, womp. Retry? <laughs> But then the stats have to tell you, like, all, all the people, all the hostages are dead, but the sweet ramps you've gone off of. <laughs> Actually, I was, like, I was, like, just picturing, like, need for speed, like, realistic graphics, but anytime something would happen to one of the people that you were smuggling, like, it would interrupt the game, like, Oregon Trail style, like, so-and-so got a concussion. Like, just little, little... I don't know. That's uh, <laughs> little damage effects to your Hostage characters. Hostage three's arm broke <laughs> off yeah. that sweet jump. <laughs> I like the getaway idea. I'm trying to think of how to, where else to go with that. Like that's something sillier. Um, you could have you could ramp the cars off of a broken bridge into the back of a helicopter, and then the car like, but the car slams into the helicopter just right, so that it looks like a car that is a helicopter. <laughs> And well, I mean, they, you know, they had the Stuntman series, or was that, well, I guess it was, yeah, I mean, they had the Stuntman series, but doing more like a co-op Stuntman could be kind of cool, where you actually have to work together to pull off some movie stunts. That could be oh, yeah, really could, intricate, but... That could be good. That would be one of those games that you'd only want to play with a person you know really well. Yeah. Just because playing, I can see randoms, like, you have to time stuff out, and you're like, you could have that whole conversation that always comes up I'm going to do the countdown, three, two, one, and then you're like, three, two, one, go? Or do we go on one? And you're like, you're an idiot. We don't know each other. It's too late. We've screwed it up. We've oh. messed it up. The stun is over. The explosions have already gone off. <laughs> All right. I think that's 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 it for Night Force this evening. Thanks for playing along, Aaron. Thanks for playing along, chat. Uh, we will be back again next week with a new episode. Probably some more people. Um, but if we'll see have, if if they're not all dead or yes. <laughs> sick or involved in a heist or uh, in no a heist. Um, but thanks Talk everybody. We will catch you next time. We'll see, see ya. ya.